Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get Compo Pack 48 working with the fantastic overhaul mod by Subquick called Undead Legacy. Before we get started, I'd just like to point out that I'm going to be using my original Steam installation of uh, Seven Days to Die to install the mod and combo pack. A lot of people quite like having a separate version, so you could have a vanilla version of Seven Days to Die on your hard drive and also a modded with Undead Legacy version or whatever it may be. It's pretty straightforward to do. If you wanted to do a separate version, you just need to navigate to your Steam apps, common, find your Seven Days to Die folder, right click and copy it. Then find somewhere else on your hard drive to put it. So for example, you could make another folder called Undead Legacy and inside of there, right click and paste your original seven days to die installation. Then you could put all of the files that I'm about to show you into this directory. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm gonna use the version that was installed by Steam. Okay, to get this to work, you're going to need to download two files. Now, obviously, you need 7 Days to Die installed. And ideally, a fresh, clean install would be great just to make sure that there are no problems introduced before you even get started. I'd recommend clearing out your mods folder. You can always add other mods later if they are compatible with Undead Legacy. So first, we'll visit ul.subquake.com. The link's in the description. That'll take us to the official Undead Legacy webpage lovely page it is as well and if you go to download on the left hand side click on that you can see here there are the two versions that we can download one of them is a stable version and the next one there is the experimental as it happens they're both the same i would recommend downloading stable so we'll click on download latest stable and in the bottom left it'll start downloading now this may take a little while because it's quite a big file but it's worth waiting for Okay, while that's downloading, let's move over to downloading the specific Combo Pack 48 files that we need for Undead Legacy. Now, they are different to the standard CP48. So let me show you where to find those. You can either go to the Magolas Combo Pack Discord page, and in the download section, you'll see a section here called CP Undead Legacy Download. And here we are. This is the version you need to download. Now, I'll also put a link to this in the description. But if you join the Discord here, at least you can get help if you need it with anything specific with the uh, combo pack. So let's click on the link there and on the page where it's hosted here, we can see a section that says download now. We we'll click on that, we get a little pop up there. We we'll just give it a moment to start downloading. And there it goes. And that will also just take a minute or two. And while that's downloading, let's just have a quick look at the instructions for installing Undead Legacy. If I click on the little arrow at the side here, Look how simple this is. That is the sum total of the instructions, and it is all you need. We'll see this in a moment, but the contents of the zip file that we are downloading contains these files and folders, and the ones in blue there are the ones that we need to highlight and drag into our Steam, Steam Apps, Common, 7 Days to Die directory. So here's my downloads folder, and there are the two files that I've just downloaded. There's the Undead Legacy one, and here's the Compo Pack one, specifically for Undead Legacy. Now notice that the icons are different, and that's because I've got 7-Zip installed. Now that's my decompression tool of choice. You use whatever you like, but I think you actually might need 7-Zip to unzip uh, the 7-Z files. Uh, it doesn't have nags the same way that WinRAR or WinZip does, so I can highly recommend using that. So if we follow the instructions from the Subquake Undead Legacy page, you can see we need the Bepinexi doorstep libs mods, doorstep config, and win HTTP files. So I'm going to find those, highlight them, and drag them into that folder. So I'll open that up. Open up the file that's inside of the zip. There we are. Bepin, I'm holding down Control, doorstop, mods, doorstop, and WinHTP. I'm in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Seven Days to Die. And you can see the other folders that are in there. And I'm just going to drag them into this bottom area down here, not into the top, so it doesn't accidentally go into one of these folders. Let that get on. So now we've got Undead Legacy installed. By all means, go ahead and start it up and see if you get the Undead Legacy menu screen and you know that things are working okay. But now we want to get the Compo Pack files installed in the right place as well. So let's open up the 7z file. I'm just going to double click on that. And because I've got 7zip installed, it's used that to open it. And inside of there, we'll see this folder that says Undead Legacy. Inside of that, we've got three folders. 
and some handy little instructions. Let's have a quick look at those instructions. First of all, it's saying step one to open up the CP Undead Legacy Prefabs folder. So if we do that, open that up, and then drag all the contents into your game prefab folder. So this is where we've got Undead Legacy installed. The prefab folder in Seven Days to Die is in the data folder. So we're into Steam Apps Common, Seven Days to Die, Data, Prefabs. And inside of there, you'll see, normally you would just see the four folders. You want to highlight all of these. I'm just going to do shift and click, or you could do control A, grab a hold of it, drag it over into this prefabs folder. So I'm going to drag it down the bottom here, not over the top of one of these and make a mess. Just drag that there and it'll take a couple of seconds to copy everything over. Now, just to confuse things, I'm going to skip step two and come back to it in a moment because step three involves this same folder. In this one, it says open the add contents to game prefabs POIs folder. If we go back here, we can see there it is. Add contents to prefabs folder. And drag that into your 7 Days to Die data prefabs POI. So we're in prefabs at the minute. We'll open up POIs. There we go. There's the vanilla POIs. Let's have a look at the contents of that folder. There we go. There's all of the combo pack things. Control A, grab a hold, drag it in and let go. And away they go. Okay, once that's done, let's go back up to the root of this zip file. And we'll look at what step two was. It says to open up the Undead Legacy Mods folder. Let's do that. And then drag the folder named CB48.1 Complete into your Games Mods folder. If I go back to Steam, Steam Apps Common, Seven Days to Die. There's our mods folder, which has our Undead Legacy things in it. And then I'm dragging the actual folder, in this case, across into there. And that's all we need to do. We can now start up Seven Days to Die and we can random gen a map using the Fun Pimp's own random world generator, and it will include the files necessary for Undead Legacy and also the additional files added by Compact Pack 48. We can have a quick look at that now, but if you've seen all you need to see, then thank you very much for watching. Please give the video a like. I would really appreciate that. And subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And a big thank you for helping me get to 2,000 subscribers. I really do appreciate that. So here we are in Undead Legacy, and we're going to start a new game. The world is going to be a new random world and I'm leaving all of my settings as they are. But what I want to do is go into advanced here because I want the chance of getting some of the nice big POIs to spawn. I would like to see a Fabusville and maybe even a mega city if that's possible. So in order to do that, there are some changes we could make here. Oh, I need to put the seed back in. My apologies. So towns I'll leave at default. It's not so much the amount of towns that gives us the chance, it's the space that they have to spawn in that gives us the chance of getting the mega city and what have you. So I'm leaving that at default. The POI is at default. I'm going to reduce the rivers to few. The craters, I don't want. All the cracks, the lakes, I'll put down to few. Plains are where a lot of the cities will spawn. Hills get in the way. Mountains also get in the way, but they look good. So I'm leaving a few in. Then I'm going to hit generate and see what we get. And here we are several minutes later. Now the fun pimp said, oh, three minutes and 20 seconds to make the map. It actually took about 20 minutes. There was a long pause after it had finished generating the map before this screen appears, and then even longer while it drew all those little squares in. So don't panic if it looks like your game has frozen while you're doing this. It is just par for the course, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. It's a 6K map. There's a huge city there, and I could already see the skyscrapers from the shadows. There's a couple of other decent sized ones and some other very interesting things going on. And I'm quite excited to have a look at it. What I'm not excited about though is these biomes. They are absolutely horrendous, aren't they? If you'd like to fix that, there is a video on my channel showing you exactly how to do that. I think there's more than one video on that subject, to be honest with you. There are also videos on some other tools that are very useful and even a website where you can drop your map to have a better preview of it and even find out exactly which buildings are on it before you've even loaded it up. So have a check out of my channel, in particular the map making playlist. And while you're there, why not like a few videos and subscribe as well? Bye bye.